Welcome to Goobertown Hobbies. My name is Brent. Today, all day, I'm going to build and paint a start collecting box from Warhammer Age of Sigmar. Can it be done? Well, I'm sure some people can do it, but it's time to see if I can do it. But why? Why do this? First, it's a fun challenge, and that's something that we do here at Goobertown Hobbies. Second, I've got a game of Age of Sigmar coming up in a few days, and I don't have an army ready. Not one on circular bases, at least. Finally, I'm using this as my belated game day for the Extra Life charity. That's a charity event kind of like one of those 24-hour walkathons, but instead of walking, it's gaming. I made my donation last year, but I didn't finish the full game marathon. Well, here we are, better late than never, 24 hours of building and painting minis. Extra Life benefits the Children's Miracle Network Hospitals, so we're doing this for the kids. What we've got here is an old greenskin start collecting box. I picked this up last year when it was looking like it might go out of production, and indeed it did. This box and the four units in here are out of print now, but they still have rules and they're gonna look great when they're painted. We've got a chariot, ten lads, a boss on a boar, a boss on foot, and five boar boys. The first thing that I did was stick a small magnet to the bottom of each base with green stuff. That can take its time curing while I assemble models. I considered starting this challenge with assembled and primed models, but starting on the sprue is a beefier challenge and it should result in a more satisfying time lapse. Making an incredibly satisfying time lapse is really the fourth reason why I'm doing this crazy project, so we're starting from the sprue. Starting with the models on the sprue is a big decision, because I assemble models slowly. Gaps and mold lines really bug me, so I tend to take my time cleaning up the bits and gluing stuff together. It's much easier to touch up a rushed paint job than to clean up a rushed assembly job or fix a mold line after it's covered in paint. Honestly, I didn't know how long this assembly step would take me. I've never timed myself assembling models before, but as long as it doesn't take me more than half of the 24 hours, I should be able to crank out a passable coat of paint in the second half of the challenge. So, I figured I absolutely had to be done with assembly by the 12 hour mark. Another restriction comes from the fact that I plan to use an airbrush to prime these models and lay down the first few colors. I live in an apartment, and I didn't want to be the guy running an air compressor in the middle of the night. I mean... I'll do it if I have to, but it's not ideal. I started working at 10am, so it'd be great if I could get these assembled by 6pm or so and then pull out the airbrush. I was making steady progress on assembly when disaster struck. I got up to stretch my legs a bit before the 3 hour mark, and my watch said that 4 hours had elapsed. So did my phone, and so did the clock on the oven. I figured out that these red numbers on the countdown were wrong. Disaster. I had less time remaining than I thought I had, and I was working slower than I thought I was. I tried downloading a couple other free clock apps for this netbook, and they were all running slow. Somehow, this old netbook can no longer mark time. It only had the one job in this video, and it failed. So, I booted up a YouTube video with a 24-hour timer, advanced it to the correct place, and got back to work. Maybe I should just buy a giant clock for these goofy Goobertown challenges, and then I can avoid all this insanity. Back to the project. You can see that I have a camera there behind me for normal speed working shots. This video is less of a tutorial and more of an epic journey. It's not so much about skill and technique as it is about determination and exploring the limitations of our human form. It's a bit like the old man in the sea, but if Santiago really needed to paint a bunch of oryx for an Age of Sigmar game. Before this marathon, I spent a lot of time preparing. The day before, I got my cameras and my work area all set up. I half-painted a couple of test orcs to get the basic color scheme. In the end, I chose to just go with the colors on the front of the box. Not the same recipes, but green skin, black and red armor, brown and gray bases. I also made sure that I had some meals and Tupperware. Filling real food. Chicken, rice, broccoli, and hoisin sauce. Then I got some sleep. When I woke up on the day of the marathon, I cooked some eggs. Eggs keep me full for a long time, which is good because I didn't have time to eat again until I got these models built, based, and airbrushed. Anyway, 
On this day, I got up a bit after 9 a.m., ate some eggs, and started the marathon a bit after 10. Starting at this time in the morning means that the last few hours of the marathon will be in the daylight. Hopefully, that will give me a little bit of the boost there at the end. Anyway, assembly is done, and I've glued some sand and rocks down to the bases. It's time to get out the airbrush. I started airbrushing a bit before 9pm on a Saturday night. This wasn't cool of me, since I assume that my upstairs neighbor doesn't enjoy the sound of an air compressor. But I take these Goober Town challenges very seriously. Plus, I'm moving out of this place soon. For those of you thinking about airbrushing inside an apartment, you can see that I'm wearing a mask. The door is closed because I kicked the cats out of the room. Off screen, I also have an air filter running. I do wonder what my neighbor thinks I'm doing down here. I think a lot of times neighbors who hear power tools assume that the landlord is doing maintenance. Not that this landlord does a ton of maintenance, and certainly not on a Saturday night, but whatever. What I'm trying to say is be cool to your neighbors. Be better than me. Anyway, now that we're finally painting, we can talk about my painting strategy. I base coated in Steinal Res Pink because I thought that would be a nice undertone for Orc Skin and for Boar Skin. Then I came in with a Zenithal highlight of Liquitex White Ink. I'm going to try to use washes to paint the chariot and the boars, so white was a good color to start with for that. Then I hit the orcs with a bright lime green ink. The way this plays over the pink and the white undercoat is pretty great. Bright highlights and warm pinky shadows that are believable as orc flesh. While I had the airbrush out, I hit the bases with brown Steinal Res Primer. I'm slowly getting more confident about using the airbrush to do multiple colors on a model. I'm no airbrush sniper, but I'm getting better. This step will save a lot of time. I can brown each base in seconds instead of minutes. In particular, this helps with the base rims. That brown on the base rim is so smooth and covers so well that the effect is basically impossible with a regular brush. All of the orcs have shoes, which I'll be painting over later, so it's fine for them to get a bit brown. In a few cases, a few bare knees got a bit of brown on them, but that's not a problem. Then I grab some steel color from Vallejo Model Air and hit the spear tips. I still sometimes leave brush strokes when I paint big, broad slabs of metal, but the airbrushed metallics are nice and smooth. The spear tips are away from the rest of the mini, so I can work on my color sniping again here. Finally, I hit the green skin with a gloss coat to get it ready for a wash, and I turned off my air compressor a little after 10pm. Then I got out of the room and left the air filter on. Then I finally had my lunch, dinner, and late night snack. Chicken, rice, broccoli, and hoisin sauce. I came back after an hour break and got right to work. The first step was to wash the chariot wood with a brown wash from Secret Weapon. Chariot the Mini Junkie in particular loves to paint wood with washes over white, and I totally agree with him. Next, I shaded the orc skin with Military Shader from Army Painter. This slides nicely over the gloss coat and then dries to a decent, relatively matte finish. It gives nice definition to those orc muscles. There were 11 hours on the clock when I started brush painting. I was tired, but not exhausted yet. Switching to brushwork was actually a really nice change of pace and was a bit rejuvenating. I was getting the sense that this challenge was possible and I might just pull it off. That airbrush step made so much progress and was really good for morale. I had basically just started to paint these models, and the green flesh was already looking great. So long as my body didn't betray me, I should be able to get these ready for the tabletop in the next 10 hours. I've never hobbied for this long before though, so I didn't know what to expect. Okay, we're getting into the black hours now. I spent most of the time between midnight and maybe 2am painting black. I use this for the vast majority of the unpainted bits on the models. Black leather armor, black metal, black cloth, black belts. Orcs have tons of belts and buckles and rings and spikes, 
but simply painting all this stuff black goes a long way towards making these models look complete. Black is either the intended color for these things, the intended base coat color for these things, or it hides the details, or it looks like shadows. I can come back in later and fix up the details with their intended colors. For now, just painting everything black will get a lot of work done while saving a lot of mental energy for me. I don't have to make decisions about each bit, I just have to paint them all black. So my body was actually in a pretty good place for the black hours. Tired, but relaxed, and feeling pretty decent. I'm actually surprised that this whole project didn't come to a grinding halt from a crick in my neck or my back or my hands cramping up or something like that. My hands did cramp up a bit towards the end of the mold line scraping phase, but they were just fine for airbrushing and then brush painting. For the black hours, things were going well. After black, I painted brown on the spear hefts. If I can just cover the primer with colors that make sense on these models, then they'll be ready for the tabletop and I will have succeeded in my quest. We're somewhere in the vicinity of 3am now, and I decided I wanted to get some details on the orcs faces before my eyes or motor control became unreliable. I put some red in their mouths, painted their tongues purple pink, painted their teeth beige yellow, and then dotted their eyes with red. Now the exhaustion was starting to catch up with me. Somehow, I was still relatively comfortable sitting in the chair, but I was definitely ready to pack it all up and get to sleep. But I was doing this for charity, and I was doing this so I could play some games with my friends. And I was doing this to get a sweet time lapse. So I kept going. My friends have been wanting to play Age of Sigmar with me for months at this point. They know I have plenty of models, and they know I love to paint. It's actually pretty funny every time they ask how my painting is going, and then I post a new video on YouTube which is absolutely not progress towards an Age of Sigmar game. Look at this Skaven I painted, he's sad because his pet rats died. Look at these gladiators, they're fighting in the Roman Colosseum. Look at how many goblins I painted, and put on square bases. That was probably the funniest one. Anyway guys, I'm getting ready for our game, I'm really doing it this time. Even this project is kind of funny though, because I'm pretty sure that Games Workshop has cut support for Vanilla Orc Lads. There probably won't be any new rules for these boys, so in a few months I might have to paint another Age of Sigmar army. Not that that's a bad thing though. These Vanilla Lads do have a special place in my heart, because it is the first army that I played in Warhammer Fantasy. This start collecting box is really interesting actually. It cuts across a good swath of history. If I read the sprues correctly, the chariot boars are from 1993, the lads are from 98, the chariot itself is from 2000, the boss is from 2006, and the boar boys are from 2009. That's a pretty good spread. I think these models are all out of production at this point, which is kind of a shame. The old boars are admittedly terrible, but everything else is pretty decent. The new boar boys are actually pretty great. Anyway, I got a coat of brown contrast paint on the boar fur, and then around 5am I took my second meal break and cooked up some eggs. I was tired when I took that break, but I came back to the painting table around 6 so the sun was coming up. The eggs, the sun, and a cup of coffee really helped, and I was hoping that that would keep me going for the final 4 hour sprint. I dry brushed the bases grey, and then very light grey, just as they appear to be on the box art. As always, the bases really help the look of the models. In this case, I saved them for near the end because it doesn't take too much mental energy to dry brush a base. I was getting really tired at this point and I knew that I didn't have the time or the focus to do any highlights. I had wanted to highlight at least the faces of the orcs and maybe the shoulders, but I could see that it just wasn't going to happen during this challenge. I spent most of the rest of the time on the boars and the chariot, teeth and some more washes for the fur of the boars, and some metal bits and bobs for the chariot. The war boss on the boar also needed a lot of work, so I did what I could. I was really fading at this point though. Then, when there were about 50 minutes left on the clock, 
I realized that the memory card on the main time-lapse camera was almost completely full. And I used this as my excuse to pull the plug. I put my brush down and called it a day. Close enough. Time to sleep. I'm amazed I made it this long, actually. I'll show you the models in just a second, but first let's bask in a few super fast time lapses. Now, I only lasted for 23 hours, and I took two one hour breaks in there, but I think I stuck to the spirit of the challenge. And I've gotta say, many of those 23 hours were a lot of fun. Some of them were not. I don't know if I'll ever do this again, but it was for charity, and the time lapse is pretty sweet. One other reason why I chose to do this challenge is because Blake and Ed from Life After the Cover Save Comedy Gaming Podcast are preparing for a 24-hour hobby stream, and I was really interested in the idea. Well, now I know what it's like. Have fun, Blake. Have fun, Ed. No getting out of this now. Moving on, let's plug the Extra Life charity. It's a 24-hour gaming marathon where you donate or convince friends and family to donate to help benefits Children's Miracle Network hospitals. Extralife.org if you're interested. I'll leave a link in the video description. I'm going to sign up and donate again this year, which means that I may need to do another event like this. Maybe I need to pick another box of minis. That'll be in November, so make sure you're subscribed to the channel. I'm posting this video in late August, so another charity gaming event worth mentioning is the Nova Open Charitable Foundation Raffle. You can buy raffle tickets to painted minis and armies. There's a lot of cool stuff up there. The raffle sales end a few days after I'm posting this video, though. September 1st, so check it out. This happens every year, though, so if you miss it for one year, check it out again next year. I certainly will. I didn't win anything last year, but I'm feeling pretty good about this year. NovaOpenFoundation.org Please feel free to mention any other gaming charity events in the comments. I think it's great to raise awareness about these things. Okay, it's time for Glamour Shots. These lads played in a three-way Age of Sigmar game with my friends Mark and Alex. The start collecting box got bolstered by a few other orc models that I had. This is my first ever game of Age of Sigmar, and these orcs died fast. A pile of orcs still looks awesome though, and it's great pulling off an orky charge, whether or not all the lads get slaughtered. I do think that I achieved a passable tabletop standard with these lads. The choice to spend an hour or so on the eyes and mouths really helps them. Scott the Miniature Maniac often talks about spending tons of time on the face and very little time on the boots, and he's right. I'm sure that I could have used some other techniques or cut some different corners to get further, but I hobbied the way I wanted to, I exhibited a reasonable amount of determination, and I'm happy with where these orcs are at. Still, there's a lot of painting left to do on these lads. In particular, this box had three banners and I didn't paint any of them yet. I'm planning to get the airbrush out and do some cool stuff with these. Also. These are all supposed to have shields, which I've primed, but I haven't painted or glued onto the boys yet. Gotta do that. Tons of the details that got covered in black are going to get painted for real, and I'm going to do a bunch of highlights, especially on the faces and muscles. All in all though, I'm happy with where I got to, especially since these started out on the sprue and in a box 24 hours ago. Hopefully this video was fun to watch. It was mostly fun to make. I always appreciate a good hobby challenge, so please consider subscribing to this channel and sharing it around. And do look into some gaming charities. There's a lot of them out there, and it's a great way to make sure that our community is doing some good as we're having some fun. Even if you can't afford to donate yourself, you can at least tell some friends about these charities and spread the word. Well, that's all I have for this time. As always, I thank you so much for watching.